guy called Rem Fury, who was a keyboard player, Italian friend of ours. And um, we just started, I started playing bass and he was just a bass and keyboard. Um, then my brother George came in, uh, so we were just like rehearsing, we were just a band. At this time, like first, I don't even think we had a name. No, we didn't. We so just we were just like, the band. Just, just jamming. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, after that, um, I think a friend of mine came in and started doing some drums. Uh, uh, Frank came in, who's Frank Burke, the drum player, and brought in Weston. Um, and these were the original mes uh, members of Second Image, which was me, Georgie, Rem, Weston, and Frank. Uh, a guy called Ozzy came and played guitar. So yeah, and that's how we were formed. And that time we became Stateside, it was our first name. And that was 1977. Oh yeah, it was, yeah. Seven, seven, end eight. of 77, 70. I would say 78 to be more yeah. realistic. And um, they were the five, my dad was right, they were the five sort of nucleus. And we took a while trying out a few, because uh, Rem, Remo, who was one of the original members, he left and went back to Italy. So we went for a, a, a sort of a while try, trying out keyboard players and sax players, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, you know, until we got the seven members that most people remember us for, for the sort of maybe like a five year period. So basically to get the sound that we wanted to, to produce on stage, because most of the stuff that we wrote was written with brass sections and stuff like that. We were using, um, I would say session players, people that were just in the band, but in the mm -hmm. band temporary. Mm -hmm. And then we came across, after various session players, using um, Lloyd Dwyer, who is the sax player. And then he became that sort of six, Definite member. You just um, know when you meet somebody. Yeah, you, just, you, know, yeah, it, it when you meet good. somebody and they just they fit in it's like, and it's just yeah. right. You know when it's right. It just sounds right. You know it, everything about it was right. It looked right, and the whole thing was, yeah. was right. And then the last was Mark Fisher. Okay. Simon. What? I can't forget. Yeah, Simon. but Simon was in there at the beginning. I thought, did you mention him in the beginning? Uh, or maybe I missed that one. Because Simon was there from quite near. Well, Simon came in after Ozzy left. Ozzy left as a guitar player, our first guitar player left, and then we were looking for, oh, we were just going through guitar players like crazy. And then we find we found Simon. <laughs> Simon was just one of those people that was just a fantastic guitarist. He just, the minute he came um, in, he just almost like intimidated every one of us. We just felt so like... <laughs> we had to up our game, we're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to, we need to yeah. get practicing. He was, just, uh, and I always think of Simon as one of the original members because when Ozzy left, we're still, we we're still very, 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 you know, we're still 79. Yeah. So, nice and nice. So, still, we wasn't even really second image yet, was we? No, no, we wasn't. So, we were still stateside. So, um, yeah, apologies. I don't know how that, because I thought you said in the beginning, but yeah, Simon was there. So, then the last two was Lloyd, and then we got Mark Fisher, and he brought something. Wes, Lloyd brought in that, that unique sax sound. He, he blended with Frank trumpet really well. So it's great for our section. Because sometimes, sorry, let me just just pick up on what my brother's saying there. Sometimes you can get somebody who's technically brilliant, you know, but they don't sound the, the tone of their sax play it doesn't, doesn't complete. sound it yes, doesn't that's it correct. doesn't make the, the, the circle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and you can't really put your finger on it can you? Yeah, it's something you can't put your finger on. It's like taking Ringo Starr out of the Beatles. It mm -hmm. wouldn't be the Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. You put a, a brilliant drummer in there, it would be a different sound. Yes. What made the Beatles the Beatles? It's that thing. So it's like magic. Printer. It's like something you can't put your finger yeah. on. Well, as soon as they come in, you know it's right. Yeah. And you don't know it till you know it. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to put sure. them together and. No, it's not all. Yeah. 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 And the same with Mark Fisher. Mark Fisher brought another element into the band. And so when you hear songs, like special lady, you need Mark Fisher's all over that. You, yeah. you just, he's, he's got a spell, what we call the Mark Fisher solo, you know, he's, he's on it. And he just brought another element to the band, and, and then we, you know, we ended up with, with, with Sam, myself, George B, you got uh, uh, Frank, Weston, Simon, Lloyd, and Mark, and that's the seven. Even though obviously Rick Remo was one of the original members, but that's the seven most people remember. Okay. For, for the longest. That's the longest period, about at least five years, wasn't it? A good five, maybe six years of those seven. To get the complete yeah. band. Yeah, and most of our hits were with those seven.
transitional period and it's not right you don't know like my brother said earlier till something comes in and adds that that seventh element whatever you want to call it and then it you you know the minute you start playing together there's magic there you know it's, it's special and we were we were young i mean um me more so because i was a year younger than the average age uh, in that, but that's only a year but it's still we're all young and so when we brought in people like Simon and, and we, people, even Mark, who came to the top of their game, we're like, it made us better. And But what we had, Second Image, were always an excellent live band. You know, you just give us the mics and you just point us in the direction. And also what's unique in Second Image, we have three lead singers. Very, very unique. Weston Foster, Frank Burke and George B. Three lead singers, which any of us could sing the song. In fact, it got so, so funny that we all started doing what sounded like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was that me singing that one? Who's singing on this? But three lead singers, three strong lead singers, and, and so we could go anywhere and, and, and sing. And, and, and you know, that's something that we're proud of. We're, you know, we were good, we were a gigging band. Everyone could gig, everyone could play. But we could also sing. It wasn't like we didn't sound like we were in a pub and screaming and shouting. We, we, we could sing it. And because our bands, you know, the Earth, Wind and Fires and the, 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 the um, Roddy Laws and the Crusaders and you know that you know when you when you when you're talking about Roy Ears and sort of thing, bands we liked, you know, you have to. If we're going to be mimicking and that's that's what we're looking up to. Mm-hmm. You need to you need to you know be decent. Yeah. But also, I, I agree with that, but I also think that because you look at something and you see it for what it is and you really like it, with Second Image there's, there's an element of naivety about it. Like Simon and, and, and Mark brought in this musicianship, this real high level musicianship. And we, we did things naturally, we, we just listened, we heard things. And, and some of the best music in the world is written by Motown. And no one in Motown wrote music. No one. no one. No one could write music. They just they knew what sounded good. Yeah. And there's something about that that takes away when when you have to listen and you have to follow music sometimes, you're losing an essence of yes. of listening. Just just does that sound you're good? Just performing. Yeah. No, you're right. Because the amount of time Simon used to say to us, we've written a song and say that note shouldn't go. <laughs> that shouldn't go. It sounds good, but and if you've been trained, you would never put that no, together. Yeah. So there is a naive, naivety, but there also is the advantages you can get from that is you're writing something and you just think that's what I want to do. It feels good. It sounds right. Whether or not someone says, oh, you shouldn't put that F sharp minor diminished minor diminished with the C sharp, 
we don't care if it sounds good. It sounds good. And we can do some wicked harmonies to it and it will yeah. sound really brilliant and no one will ever notice unless someone will go, that sounds brilliant, rather than doing this fantastic big augmented sound chord. But who cares? If it doesn't sound good. <laughs> you know? yeah, it's all about the sound. Really. It's all about feeling from the beginning yes. and the end of the song as well. Yeah. Or the composing. Mm -hmm. Personally, for me, um, I love both our albums, but I have more. I have a, a deeper love for the first one um, because that we would just we could really do what we wanted, you know. Uh, and that's where you got tracks that went into reggae halfway. You had tracks that were real nice ballads. You had, you know, the, you know, you had can't keep holding on, a special lady. You, had, you know, these these are you know love tones like is it me. You know, these tracks, you know, we, we just was, you know, we do a gig and we do this groove, we've got to do this one and we're in the studio, yeah, let's do it. There was no A&R guy saying, oh no, you, you can't do that. We just, let's do it, you know. <laughs> and on the second one, if you, if you, I think that's what my brother's saying, yeah. so, so I think there was more money to be yeah. And, you know, we, Bob Templeton, you know, he was wrote Thriller, you know, he came over and done a couple of tracks with us and, you know, there was just people with a little bit more money, but, we lost a little bit more control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was still us, and we was everything was all. And we're still proud of it. Everything was totally us, and nothing went through without us saying we liked that and it was right. But what happened was, once you let go of the reins, other people start taking over, and mm. and, and you know, different people start stepping in and writing songs for you, you know, which is Bob um, Hart's songs. Yeah. Um, but we we still got things like Only Lover on the album, which is very second. And, mm -hmm. and um, starting again to make this song. Um, that, you know, so we still got, um, but you've got things like um, Satisfies Your Life, which I which I like to listen to of the mm -hmm. second album. So I think there's advantages and disadvantages as to when you get more successful. And that was the truth. The second album was more successful. Um, I remember we, 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 we did the Dominion Top and Quarter Road and we sold it out within 24 hours. And the, the manager said, Who are you? <laughs> the, the guy who was running, the dear million, said, who are you? You sold out who for are you? hours. <laughs> we don't know who you are. And it was recorded by Radio London. Yeah. So the whole thing was like, not when you sold out in 24 hours, but a whole place was rewired by the BBC. And this guy who ran the Dominion Theatre, which was the biggest theatre in Victoria, was like, I don't, we don't we've never even heard of you, who are you? Nobody sells out a, a, a venue in 24 hours. did was we followed them everywhere from here to Scotland we went to every record shop and we'd walk in the record shops with second image albums window display we would do our own window display split up and seven of us <laughs> and go in the vans driving up into the country with all the guys freezing Let's is there break a, this. a new project or a project of an album? It is a project and album, and in fact, um, I have one for you. I do have one for you. Um, the, 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 the project is called the Groove Association. What that's about, it's, it's going to be a production house that later on, because at the moment it's Groove, Groove Association featuring Georgie B, but later on it could be featuring anybody. So it's that Groove Association is going to be something that when you see that, you know it's going to have that that sound that you like, but it could be anybody singing, anybody that, because me and my brother are now collaborating on the next album. Um, I'm also working with Weston on, on the, the, in fact, the new single, which is out on the 3rd of December, which I will put on your awards video, that was produced by myself and Weston. So I'm now, as I go into working onto the second album, I want to get back to working with the people that I really, you know, grew up with working. Um, because collaboration, we're just talking about it, it's just everything. And it doesn't matter how good you are, if you're with someone, you bounce. 
Yes, you're a star, and you know that you'll go far. Don't no, answer. No, you're my special lady. No. I can't keep holding on. It's, it, and it, those kind of, you know the way I feel. But I won't. And you just, you find the crowd finishes it off for you. Melodies. You can take those melodies and put them anywhere. And that is what's missing. That's what we're going to bring back. <laughs> 